Welcome Life Sciences, welcome to another exciting Life Science lesson. What are we looking at today? We're going to do a mammalian tissue revision. And I know if you are anything like the kids that I teach, mammalian tissue was a very difficult concept for them to understand. Now before we start, very often when I teach this, I I actually, at the end, we dissect a chicken wing. I know that sounds really weird, but when you eat your chicken at home, all right, your chicken wing, a lot of the mammalian tissue that we're going to look at, all right, just quickly revise, you can actually find on your chicken wing. All right, so next time you eat your chicken wing, maybe you're just a little bit more aware of, of the mammalian tissue that we are looking at. So guys, the most important thing we looked at when we look at all right, the tissue is, is what is a tissue? So here in front of me, I have the level of organization. Now, you started off the beginning, you probably looked at something called biochem, right? We did biochemistry, and that was looking at nutrients and vitamins and proteins. And, and why did we look at that? Because we need to understand the basic concept of what a cell is. Now, when we looked at cells, we said they had certain kinds of shapes and arrangements and their structure versus their functions. And what we have look here now is, what is a tissue? A tissue is when I take a group of cells, right? So not just one cell, it's a group of cells. That group all have the similar structure and what I do is I put them together and they need to perform a specific function. Now, when we looked at the concept of a cell, right, remember cell is just a model. And now we need to take these concepts and we need to change it. We need to take the concept of a cell and we need to pimp it up. That's exactly what we need to do. We need to pimp the cell up. We need to change it to tweak it to perform its particular function. Now, when I look at the things that I can do with my body, all right, things need to be different. How my brain works is different to how my muscle works is different to how, all right, other parts, how other things are going to work. So that means I'm going to take the basic concept of a cell, I'm going to change it, and all these cells are going to look similar. Okay. The first group of mammalian tissues that we looked at was this epithelial tissue. What epithelial tissue means? It lined all the cavities. I want you to take your tongue, all right, and run it around your mouth. That's epithelial tissue. I don't want you to do this, but if I stuck my finger up my nose, that's hollow. That is epithelial tissue. When I swallow, when I breathe, those are all tubes. That is what I mean by epithelial tissue. They line everything, right? So they're the outer layer and they're going to protect all the ones underneath. And we looked at four different epithelial tissues. The first one we looked at was squamous epithelium. Those are flat cells. I said often look at the tiles on your floor. That's exactly what they do. And we're going to find them in any organ where I need smooth transport. In my blood vessels, in my heart, in my lungs, where it's nice and smooth and things can move slowly. You don't want your, all right, you don't want your blood vessels to be a four by four track because then they're going to get stuck and we're going to get blood clots. Okay, so remember, look at the function and look at the structure. Flat, smooth. Then we looked at cuboidal. What does cuboidal mean? It's a cube shape, all right? It's as high as it is long. And we're going to find those in glands. That's why I put this picture over here. We're going to find it in our adrenal glands. We're going to, anywhere we, we're going to secrete something, in our sweat glands, in our thyroid glands. Right, so what's going to happen is we're going to find cuboidal in our glands. Right, you're going to probably find that later on when you look at the kidney, etc. Then we looked at two similar, all right, structured cells, 
And remember, look at the epithelial, very often named after what it looks like. Columna, because they're column shaped. And these guys have got very special cells called goblet cells. And those goblet cells very often produce mucus. Now, why would I need mucus? Let's have a look where I find it. This is my digestive system. And once I start swallowing food, the food needs to go throughout this whole system. And what is going to make it so nice and easy to move through is going to be the fact that all these mucus cells are going to make transport so much easier. Okay, so that is my columnar epithelium. Why? Because they are column shaped, longer than they are wide. The final epithelial tissue that we looked at, right, is ciliated epithelial. Now, what we need to look at, there's just one thing that you need to understand. That if a cell, all right, the cytoplasm looks like that, that is called microvilli. Right, that is called a microvilli. Here, however, is a cell that's separate, and on top of that cell, right, we've got little hair-like structures. And those hair-like structures are called cilia. So when we look at ciliated columna, they are column-shaped cells, but unlike the ones we find in our digestive system, they have got these microscopic little hairs at the top, hence the name ciliated columna. Now, they also have goblet cells because they're also going to produce mucus, but for a different reason. Guys, what system have I got over here? All right, my respiratory or my gaseous exchange system. And why will I need these with little hairs? And the mucus, because throughout my system, will I breathe until around about there, these little hairs and the mucus are going to trap any kind of dust or unwanted things. And we're going to get them out of the body. So imagine they trap there, those little cilia, they move, right? So if I get all dusty and stuff, they move. And they take all the things that I don't want to go into my lungs and they take it out. All right. So when we look at the concept of epithelial tissue, they line. As I said to you here, this is a hollow tube. It lines. Here, when I breathe in, these are hollow tubes. They line. So epithelial tissue is going to be my lining tissue. Okay, guys. Let's have a look at a question on the epithelium. Now here it says here, study the diagram below and answer the questions that follow. So there is a little monarchy in the middle and there's a whole lot of cells around it. They don't tell you what it is, so you need to be able to recognize it. Okay, the first thing it says is identify the tissues labeled A, B, and D. So three marks there. So number A, right, gives. Now have a look when we look at each of these things. They give you the tissue and they give you the location. That is really nice. They are helping you, right, giving you the location where it is found. And obviously you need to recognize it. So here I can see they are column shaped and they got little hairs at the bottom. So this is going to be my ciliated columna epithelium. And I write all of it over there. The next one they asked me was B. Now I look at the shape. Remember, epithelial tissue is all about shape. And it tells me it's in a gland. But the shape is cuboidal. And you don't write just cuboidal. They asked you the tissues, and it is epithelium, cuboidal epithelium. The last tissue that they asked you is number D. 
right? And they said over here that as you can see it's found in your small intestine, but they are column in shape. So they are going to be columnar epithelium. Guys, epithelial tissue is easy to identify. So very often it's a nice question to, to, to ask. Some tissues are difficult to see. So very often the examiners usually, or you, hopefully your examiners, will choose the one that is much clearer and obvious for you to see. Now the next question. State one function of each of the tissues labeled B and D. Now, don't stop there. A lot of you stop at that sentence, but it says, in the locations seen in the diagram. Now, that is very important. So, number B, I said was cuboidal. Now, what is its function? Look here. All right. It has, so what does cuboidal tissue do? It secretes, where is it? Saliva in the mouth. Now, what do we see? Say, why do, what the word is? Secretes, because that is what cuboidal tissue does. It is found in glands and glands secrete. And they say to you, you must use the location in the diagram, and there it said to you that it's found in the mouth. Number D, number D, all right, is in the small intestine. So it, actually here it's in the stomach. So if we're looking at the stomach, all right, what do we know about the right epithelium in the stomach? What does it secrete? All right, epithelial, it can have two things. It lines the stomach and protects the stomach from what? It would be there from the hydrochloric acid. What else could you have maybe said there? Okay, that it's in the stomach and what do we know? That it also secretes, it can secrete mucus in the stomach, all right, to protect the stomach. So there we have the two different things that it can, all right, protect. Now is the last question here. State two ways in which tissue A is adapted for its function. Two ways, all right, what does it do? What's the most important thing? It has cilia, and what do the cilia do? It can move or trap, all right, dust in the respiratory system. And what else does it have? It has mucus glands. And what does the mucus glands do? It also traps dust and gets it out of the body, okay, and gets out of the body. All right, guys, I'm afraid that is all we have time for. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, Life Sciences. From that small break, get the blood flowing, get the oxygen flowing. This mammalian tissue can be quite a ride. All right, what are we looking at? Mammalian, animal tissue, me. All right, what am I made of? And we looked, the first tissue that we looked at was epithelial tissue. That tissue was quite easy, all right, to identify, to see. And basically, what did we have? Those of you who've built Lego before, it was quite simply, you have this base and you put the cells one on top of each other. The next tissue that we're going to look at is somewhat more difficult, all right, to identify each time because the structure is slightly different. 
Okay, so guys, when we look at connective tissue, I want you to understand this concept, have it in the back of your head here. I want you to build the following. I want you to have the following with you. I want you to have uh, maybe some water, all right? You might need the following things, cement, the water, or the jelly. I want you to have an elastic band with you. I want you to have a piece of string with you. And I want you to take an egg and I want you to take all the stuff out and have a hollow eggshell. I just want you to have that with you because that's how we're gonna make connective tissue. Unlike all the cells being so neatly in a row here, connective tissue, right, is totally different. It has a totally different structure. Now, what does connective tissue do? It connects, right? As we're going to see, it connects. And when I say it connects, it's going to connect one structure with another. It might bind or support something, all right? It might be as, as simple as an insulator, and it could transport. And as I said to you, we're gonna play around with all of these things when we look at connective tissue. Guys, it's the most abundant tissue. It's the tissue that's pretty much going to be found everywhere. Now, the first tissue that we look at, right, now I want you to build the following. I want you to take a container, I want you to put water in, I want you to put jelly in. Then I want you to put a string in, then I want you to put elastic band in, and then I want you to drop, I don't know, you can take something, I don't know, um, let's take, what would you have lying around your house? If you do have Lego, you're just gonna pop it in. If you don't have Lego, you can just find any kind of thing, shape that you can put into it. What have you got? You've got nothing, no pattern whatsoever. But that's exactly, all right, what we're going to find. This tissue is called areola connective tissue. And basically the jelly, all of this is in a jelly. And what do we find in the jelly? The strings are going to be tough. You can't move them. However, what else are you going to have? You're going to have elastic bands. What can elastic do? In and out. What are those things that you're going to pop in? They're going to be cells. And what this layer does over here, guys, is that it binds the skin to the body. It also binds all the different organs. Very often I talk to my class about this burevos layer. What do I mean by a burevos layer? And if you look at your chicken wing when it's raw as well, if you pick it up, go take the skin, and if you pick it up, underneath is like a, a white see-through layer that you can't really see that it's there, but you know it's there. What I call it the burevos layer is that I can see like there's a layer on the outside, and it's thin, 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 and it's keeping everything in but it's not as obvious as my burevos. So next time you play with your chicken wing, just take the fat out, your skin, and just have a look underneath there. And we call this loose connective tissue. And the reason why it's called loose connective tissue is that it's the fibers. If you have a look here, look at the white, you can see a lot of the matrix, right? This is the most abundant tissue. Now, what happens is underneath the skin, what I can find is, if I go back here, do you see I put a lot of cells in here? What cells could I have? I can have white blood cells. Why? Because if I cut myself, what does my body need to do? It needs to be able to protect it, right? So I've got these white blood cells. What else do I have underneath? Aha, uh -huh. I've got fat. Now guys, have a look here. They round, and what does my body do when I do all the excess carbohydrates in the lipids? They are changed to this fat, and there's my nucleus underneath. So adipose tissue, fat tissue, all right, is underneath my skin, but it's important because it's there to insulate. I found that, that layer around my organs, it's important because it insulates. I find it around my nerve cells. Why? So I conduct a dry. Okay, however, if I eat too much and it fills up, it can be bad for me, right? That is adipose connective tissues. 
Now the next one that we look at, and these are, are very difficult to identify, but I want you now to take the string or the elastic. Now if I put a lot of string together, all right, they are the fibers, can you see here? All of those, they string. And there we go, there's the cells, because we have to make the tissue. But what's the difference between a string or a rope and an elastic band? All right, string is tough and I can't move, it's strong. Elastic can stretch and come back again. So, all depending on what I put in, I've still got the jelly, do I put a lot of strong fibers or do I have a little bit of elasticity? That is what I'm looking at when I look at dense connective tissue. So guys, why have I got this over here? All right. Very important, what does a ligament do? A ligament connects bone to bone. See, we're looking at connective tissue. What does a tendon do? It connects muscle, all right, to bone, connective tissue. Now, if I put fibers, if I make them nice and strong, what do I do with a joint? I make that joint nice and strong. I stabilize my joints. It's connective tissue, but what do I do? I make that joint nice and strong. And you guys know if you twist it, oh, then I really hurt it and I damage it. But what have I got? Lots of fibers. I want that area to be nice and strong. Okay, again, look at this, all right? It's yellow elastic. The reason why it's yellow, obviously I've stained it again. Now, you're like thinking, oh, how is this different to the previous one? Guys, they are wavy, right? These are elastic fibers. They can expand and, right, they stretch. Look where I've put them. Look where I put it. I put it in my lungs, because what do my lungs need to do? I need to inhale and I need to exhale, right? So what do my lungs need to be able to do? stretch and then return back again. So again, what do I find? A lot of fibers, less matrix. Matrix is my jelly. And what are all of these cells over here? All of those cells are going to be, all right, um, examples of that. Now the last tissue we're looking at is going to be cartilage. So guys, cartilage, all right, is tissue Again, look here, but what do I have this time? I'm looking at my eggshell. And my eggshell, I've got cartilage cells inside of them. And the different cartilage that I'm going to find, highline cartilage, look at your chicken bone, your nose. I'm going to see fibro cartilage, where I need a lot of support in my intervertebral discs. All right, and then I'm going to have this yellow elastic cartilage where I need it to be in my ear where I've got these cells, but I've got the cartilages that are going to go with it. Welcome back, Life Sciences. You really needed that break. Mammalian tissue is quite a difficult tissue. All right, we're going with our chicken wing. All right, so if you've got the chicken wing, now the skin, that is a bit of, all right, epithelium. If I lift up the skin, I'm going to see a little bit of yellow bits. That is adipose tissue, connective tissue. When I lift up the skin, there's a nice little see-through white layer. That is areola connective tissue. And when I break the bone, all right, that nice, white, smooth stuff is cartilage. And guys, you know what? When I also break the bone, I break the ligament. So now we're going to carry on looking at the rest of the tissues that I'm going to find, all right, on my chicken wing. Okay, guys, now we're looking at the bone part. Now, when it comes to bone, 
bone is really, really noticeable because it has all of these layers on it. Right, so bone has got now, when we've got, as I said, all these concentric circles. Now we're going to look at bone in more detail when you look at the skeletal system. But basically what you're looking at is, remember in the previous one, we had a jelly. We just make cement here. The matrix is really, really hard because bone's function is support. So instead of using jelly, like I did in my previous one, right, I've got this whole concept of it being really hard. And because it's really hard, I'm going to bring out my eggshell, like I did with my, with my cartilage, because that's where I'm going to see. See, it's like an eggshell, and I'm going to have the bone cells in there. So as I said, the bone, really recognizable. It's an easy tissue. Why is it so hard? Because it's support. We need protection, right? And guys, very importantly, but a lot of the things you're going to do when you delete the skeletal system, bones actually produce blood and help with homeostasis. Now the next tissue we're going to look at is blood tissue. Okay, so areola connective tissue, I did jelly, I put fibers in, bone, I use cement. This tissue, I just use water. All right? Why? Because I need something liquid. My matrix is liquid. So what is blood made up of? Blood is made up of the blood plasma, which is the liquid part, because blood needs to flow. But inside the blood plasma are three different kinds of cells. And you're going to be doing this a lot more when you look at the heart and the cardiovascular system. Now the three different types of cells that I'm going to find in my blood are going to be my red blood cells or my erythrocytes. And what they do is they're going to carry all of the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. They look like these little donuts without a hole in it. They're small and they're squishy, all right? The white blood cells or a leukocyte, can you see they're much bigger and they've actually got a nucleus inside of them and they can actually move out the blood and they can eat, engulf all the foreign things. The tiniest of all of the cells, and this is what they look like if you enlarge them, are going to be platelets. All right, and another word for them, I'll write it over here, is called thrombocytes. Now what these do is they help the body right, in blood clotting. You guys see them as a scab, right? So when you see your scabs, those are going to be, all right, your blood clotting. Why does blood, a connective tissue? Guys, blood connects your whole body together. It's how I connect everything. I transport oxygen from one to the other. That's connecting the heart to the lungs, right? So that is why it's seen as a connective tissue. Right, so as I said there, when we look at the function, that's what each of them are going to do. Now the next thing that we're going to look at is muscle tissue. And we get three kinds of muscle tissue. All right, so you need to hear when it comes to these, they are pretty, they slightly different to each other. You need to be able to recognize the three different types. Okay, so what are they? They are skeletal muscle, long, thin cells with obvious striations. And these ones, all right, are voluntary. I decide when I want to use them. The other two over here that we're going to look at are in, we said they are involuntary, and those messages, all right, are continuous. I'm going to find uh, muscles in my heart, have a look at the difference here. My heart muscles join each other, unlike the ones over here. And that you're obviously going to look at when you do the heart, but most importantly, why would they join? And as I say to my class, the heart has to work as one beat. And if I'm singing my own rhythm and the guy next to me is singing his own rhythm and he's singing his own rhythm, we're not working as one. But if we are joined, what can we do? 
we can have a beautiful rhythm. And what does my heart need to do? It needs to work on a rhythm. So if I'm connected, I can work to each, with each other for a good rhythm. The last one we look at is smooth muscle. And smooth muscle has a totally different setup. We call it a spindle shaped. And it's actually made up of each of these individual cells that are linked together and are also able all right, to bring about movement. Guys, when it comes to muscle, most important thing that they're all going to do is they're going to relax and then they're going to contract. And each time they do that, what are they going to do? They're going to bring about movement. That's the most important thing. Muscles need to bring about movement. Are you able to differentiate between the three types? As I said there, they can plump blood. In the body, they need to move things around. Okay, what kind of questions can we ask on this? When we look at the blood, the one thing we also, in a way, look at is the different kinds of blood groups, right? We have A, we have B, we have AB, we have O, and we just basically look at the different blood groups. But again, you will also look at it a little bit more when you look at the cardiovascular system. So I found this question over here, right? It says, an investigation was carried out to determine the shortage of blood type O that faces South Africa in three different blood banks, A, B, and C. Blood from a person with blood type O can be used safely in transfusions into patients of any other blood type, because blood type O is a universal donor. The table below shows the blood units available and the blood units required by each blood bank. Right. So the first thing, right, what we have to do is draw a bar graph. So when we draw a bar graph, what are we going to do over here? We're going to draw our axes. As I said to you here, we can just use the information given to us. This is the independent variable, and this is going to go on my x-axis. Okay, so what do I label it? Blood bank. And what am I going to draw? It's a bar graph. I am going to draw bars. Now have a look at my question. Draw a bar graph to represent the units of blood available in each of the three different blood blanks. So I am going to draw this column. Be very careful that you read your question, otherwise you're going to want to plot everything. Okay, so I'm going to then have blood bank on my x-axis. I am then going to take this heading and I'm going to put it over here. Units of total blood. All right, in, it says in 2016, and then it says there in liters. And there I've got my units. Now I need to decide, because guys, this is quite a lot. It goes from 20 to 181. What do I need to make sure? Let's start, All right? 20, I can go 40, 60, 80, 100. All right, or what else could I have done? I could have maybe gone up. I'm going to see if we can do here. What happens if I go up and I get there stuck and I say, okay, that's not gonna work. Let's try going up 50, 100. 150, 200, there we go. Then I'm going to draw my bars, A, B, and C. So A, and I'm going to make sure that the measurement is the same in between them. There, 50, oh, sorry, so 20. Let me go back a little bit again. We've got to go just underneath. There we go, so we go up to 20. And what do I label that? A. Then I make sure the space over there, and the next one is 120, all right, and then I draw my next bar graph. What do I still need to add? Guys, I need to add a heading, and I always tell them it is a bar graph, 
showing what the total units of blood available in each of the different blood banks. Okay, so I didn't need to know too much about that, but I did need to know the skill. Now the next thing, all right, how many blood units are needed in blood blank C to reach the maximum units required? All right, now I'll take out my calculator. How many blood units are needed in blood bank C? So I'm going to look over here. So guys, look here. This is really, how many do I need? 510. How many do I have? 181. So what am I going to do? 510 minus 801. And that answer is going to tell me exactly how much I'm going to need. All right, so when we do our workings out, that is going to tell me what I'm going to need to do. Okay, guys, I think time has run up for now. We're going to have a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, Life Sciences. As I said, that break, all right, you need it. Mammalian tissue is really difficult. Where are we on our chicken wing? Okay, so what we've done is, as I said to you, the skin, epithelial tissue, the fat underneath, the adipose tissue. When I lift up the fat, all right, I've got that areola connective tissue. And then when I break my leg bone, you know, the wing, the two bones, Sometimes I see a little white thing that is a ligament. And then I see that white smooth layer that is hyaline cartilage. Then I can see the bone. The bone is going to be very obvious for me. And sometimes what I can see is like a, a red like piece of string. That would actually be blood vessel. Now the most of the chicken is muscle. That is what you're eating. So I want you to see if you can take the muscle and you just gently move your finger down, you're gonna see like a, a white little piece. It's kind of like got a bluey kind of tinge to it. That's going to be the tendon, and you'll see the muscle joins the tendon to it. So pretty much looking at your chicken wing, you can see all of the different, all right, mammalian tissues that are going to be on your chicken wing. Our last tissue that we're going to look at is not connective tissue. Our last connective tissue is going to be the nerve. Now, if you're looking on your chicken wing, it's not always the easiest one to find, but you're looking for a very thin structure that looks like a piece of string. That could be your nerve tissue. All right, so what exactly is a nerve tissue? Now, when we look at the structure, all right, of a nerve, a nerve is actually a collection of these. This is a neuron. And guys, as I said to you, this blows everything out the water about what we know about cells. From here to here, that is a cell. And it looks very different to what we saw in the beginning when we looked at the concept of what a plant and an animal cell looks like. But remember, structure versus function. When we talk about nervous tissue, nervous tissue is sending a message, all right, from the bottom to the top. So that's what this is going to look. It looks like an electrical cord. And here we're going to find a normal cell body, right? So the information, this is called a neuron. Right, a neuron is a single structure and we put a whole lot of neurons together and that is where we look at the concept of a nerve. And basically every single thing in our body, when we spoke about the muscle, I said to you, muscle does its work. Where does the message come from? The brain or the spinal cord, which is the nerve. Where do the, so any kind of information, right? How does my heart know how fast to beat? The brain will tell it. How do I know 
that I need to breathe. My brain will tell it because that's my smooth muscle, etc. So the brain is going to tell mostly the muscles and other things around how to do its work. So you've got here, you've got the concept of what a cell is, but now we have to transmit a message, right? And that is how we have the cell has this long extension. Okay, guys, and over here, that's a little bit of fat because it's an insulator. We want the message to go from one to the other. When it comes to this type of mammalian tissue, you need to be able to draw and to label this. It's one of the tissues that is a lot more simpler. It's just a single cell. It's much simpler to be able to draw and to label. And when we look at, you're going to look at this section a lot more when you look at the brain and you look at the spinal cord. But the one thing you do need to see is that there are, there's actually three types of neurons. But what we're looking at here is one of the neurons we say is a motor neuron and another of the neurons is a sensory neuron. And you will see they have a slightly different function. And basically what happens is the following. Say for example, it is cold outside. Your sensory neuron will tell you it's cold. It will go to your brain, right? And the brain will send a message back okay, you're cold, right, let's start to shiver, right, what does I start to shiver, I got goosebumps, right, my muscles, my hair stand on end, so I sense something, and then I do something about it, okay, so when it comes to the nerves, that is basically what they're going to do, so we have now looked at all the different kinds of mammalian tissues, and as I said to you, the most difficult part is actually trying to recognize when you're given a diagram, what tissue am I looking at? Because unfortunately, if you can't recognize the tissue, you're going to have a problem answering the questions that are going to follow it. Okay, so what kind of questions can we ask on this section? Let's start. Now, the one question that I have here is of all of the different all right, tissues together. And it's a nice, it's an easy question. It's a simple question. It says, study the diagrams below of animal tissue and answer the questions that follow. Now, as I said to you, that is quite a nice one because what it wants you to do is write down the letter and the number of the tissue that. Right, so you need to be able usually to recognize it, know its function, and maybe look at all right, its, its structure. So here are the three ones. The, the, there's four questions here. And for each of them, let's go back, very important, the letter and the number. All right, each one of them might have one or the other. Okay, so guys, let's start forms bones making up the skeleton of the mammal. Okay, so if we have a look over here, forms the bones making up the skeleton of the mammal. I'm actually going to say over here, bone is the most recognizable one, remember, because it's got those lovely little circles. Okay, so letter, all right, would be B, and the number, it is diagram number. Okay, what would be that number? Number four. There's my next one. Carries impulses from the central nervous system to the effectors, muscles or glands. All right, so guys, carries impulses from the central nervous system. I know that's nerve. And which diagram is that going to be? There's only one label. So I know it's going to be label number I. Okay, number C is responsible for voluntary movement. So if I'm going to do voluntary movement, which muscle is going to make sure that I have voluntary movement? It is going to be, all right, structure number three. So let's write it over here. 
that is going to be skeletal muscle. Now the last one contains microscopic hair-like projections lining the nasal cavities and the trachea. That leaves me with two, all right? So the number there is going to be number two. And I can put a letter here that's going to be number A, the reason being that is pointing to the cilia. This is a nice, easy question. It's usually going to be found in section A, all right, of your exam. Remember, your section A is usually 50 marks. And it's the nice, easier questions that you will be able to answer. Okay, let's go into a, a slightly more challenging question. It says, study the diagrams below of animal tissue. It does tell you that it's mammalian tissue. And answer the questions that follow. Now, you've got two structures here, an A and a B. And from each of them, there's obviously we need to understand. So number A, we're going to, in our head already, what are we starting to say to ourselves? Okay, this is a nerve cell. And then I'm looking at all these different ones in B. And I'm looking at the word tissue. And I'm thinking, okay, this could be blood. So what kind of questions that we can ask? Exactly that. What is A and what is B? Now remember, they asked you for the tissue. They didn't ask you for the cell. They're very specific about the tissue. So when I identify A and B, what tissue is it? Okay, so A is going to be nervous tissue. All right, and what is B going to be? B is going to be blood tissue, because that's what they asked us, the tissue that each of them is going to be. Ah, oh, now we have to provide labels for the structures one to six. So as I said to you, one of the things we usually do, have to be able to do, is to label the structure. So number one is a neuron, well, number A is a neuron, all right? Number one are the dendrites, because I've learned this. So guys, now you see six marks here, and if you haven't studied this problem properly, all right, you cell nucleus, or just nucleus. Three is pointing to this over here, which is the axon. Four is the cell around there, and those are your Schwann cells. Five is your node of Ranvier. All right, I'm going to go over here. And six is your terminal end plates. How's that? Nice, easy marks because that's what they have told me. Guys, I know our time, unfortunately, now has run out. So if you're going to get, go and get ex pass papers, go and get revision papers, right? Know what the cell does, know what the blood. The most difficult part of the mammalian tissue, it's all the diagrams. Know the diagrams. Can I see what they look like? What is their function, right? And if I can relate their structure to the function. I'm afraid that's all we're going to have time for. Until next time, see you. Cherry bye.